The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. We have the Dow Industrials down 16, Nasdaq off 15, S&P's off 8.5, gold. Gold contract down $6.60, trading at 15.06 an ounce. We get silver down 4 cents, $17.58 an ounce. Light sweet crude up 71 cents, $53.52 .52 a barrel. Notes and bonds. You get the 10 year down 10 ticks. 131.19, 30 year off 20, 164.12, and King Dollar. King Dollar down 22 ticks, trading 98.789. The Euro is at 109. The Yen is out here at 106.98, and the Pound is at 123 to 1 the US dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world and the world of the S&Ps? Let's take a look at it. What do you have? So if we go over into the futures first, what you're going to see is this, folks. Bottom line, last Wednesday, last Thursday, rather, you got into a low, and the futures got into a low of uh, 2855. You had lighter volume. You were going into the uh, two separate downdrafts out here, which settled uh, into lows, which is August 26th, as well as... August 6th. So bottom line, you rejected lower price, you did it with lighter volume, then what do we do? Then you pop 57 points the following day from 28.96 up to 29.53. Volume contracted dramatically. In fact, if we go over and take a look at the S&P, what you're going to see is this. You're going to see in the SPY, we did 66 million shares. The 66 million is going into a, approximately 142 million. Bottom line, what you get out here now, my take is that we're building cars once again to get down to this August 5th level, which is the 281.72. And more than likely, we've set up a much larger ABC structure on the way down. That A point uh, being uh, 302. Let's actually, let's do this, the futures so you can see it set up in the futures. So in the futures, you would have your A point set up at the 3,024 and your B at 2,855. So we're talking about what, 45, 48, 148 uh, S&P points, which would get you down to uh, eight, uh, about 2,800, 2,805. And your low that was established out here is 2,777. Is that right here? One second. 3,024. Yeah, that's right. So the, the ba the, basically the setup is to get a test of this uh, August 6th level. We go take a look at the NDX 100, the three Qs. What do you have in the NDX? Same type of setup inside the, that NDX. And what I'd like to see out here this morning, I, I would have liked to see it in the S&P, but I, my, my take is that the S&P is not going to uh, test the highs of Friday. Uh, I'd, like to, I'd love to see that test, actually. Uh, what you have in, in the Qs, uh, it's very close. The, the high of Friday inside the queues was 189.08. Yeah, 189.08. It'd be great to see that tested. Right now, we've got to 188.69, uh, which isn't the low of that spike either. Small caps. Let's go take a look at the small caps out here. So the small caps have been leading us down. Uh, small caps out here, oh, this would be good if they tested. Okay, so small caps, same type of setup. You know, the IW1 went, went from 158 all the way down to 144. Uh, you popped on Friday, got to 149.25, and thus far we've made 149.10, and that is looking that's also gonna test it. So that test, we'll see whether we can get to that test. So the low of the test was 148.94, and we get to 195, 90, 149.12. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to test that baby. That, that's going to be cool because well, that's going to tell us, folks, okay, uh, bottom line, is that it, is it going to be able to make it or break it at that particular point? Go ahead. Now, let's do bonds first because bond, the bond market, the 10-year note, the 30-year bond, the TLT, is all saying they want higher price. It's pretty phenomenal, actually. It's, it's really phenomenal in the aspect that what you had out here is that 
on Friday from highs to lows, from lows to highs, you're up 57 S&P points. Uh, it's very unusual, folks, when you're up 57 S&P points that the note and bond market continues to want higher price, lower yield. What that's telling me is that, number one, it's going to go test the highs of September, and more than likely, we're going to blow those highs away, because all we had done, actually, is that when we take a look at, watch if I put this on a continuous contract, it's pretty anemic, the type of contraction that we actually got, meaning a pullback, from the highs to lows and the note as well as the bond market. You know, if we, if we take a look at this, you're going to see something that's pretty wild, actually. If we take, if I just take, yeah, I'm going to take from the run from April of 20, well, yeah, I might as well take the whole thing, I and mean, you'll see this. Okay, so from October to October, and that, that's, a, that's a good indication, actually, because the longer-term charts will give you a better longer-term indication. It doesn't give you the short one, but it does give you the longer one. So that baby, when we start running higher, when the whole world thought rates are going to go up, and that was in October of last year, uh, bottom line is that the 10-year went from 117 all the way up to 132. Well, the retracement we did was only 23% retracement, and that was supposed to be the end of the world, that that's the end of the rates. Guess what? It's not even close, man. Uh, you do a 23% retracement of a, of a leg like that, you can go a lot higher. I mean, in, in spades. So when I look at that, that's telling me that guess what? This market still wants to pull back. What's intriguing out here today is that we did have Asia down last night. Europe is up today, but our market still can't hold price. Gold contract, what do we have inside the gold market? Gold, what the gold market did last week is this. The gold market came back into its breakout area from August. Bottom line, rejected lower price and never got to the beginning of the breakout area. The beginning of the breakout area on gold was 1448. We got down to 1465, rejected lower price. I really like what gold's doing out here today. So what we've done is this. You know, we've had a high of 1518. You get a low of 1501. It's already rejected that level. Your little swing down here, just in general, is approximately the 150170. We went to 150120. You're going to get a rejection out here. This thing's building cause to get up into the 1566. Uh, 90 once again, and that correlates to which we, what we haven't had yet is that we haven't had this dollar basically get to lower price. What we, did, what we have had is that it failed to hold price last week. We had three great drives to the top, three great drives to the top. First one was on August 1st, the second one was on September 3rd, and the third one was on October 1st. Bottom line, if we get back inside 90, 8371 and right now you're at 98798 you're going to talk a whole different animal inside the metals market and it's not going to take much the reason it's not going to take much if we go over to the euro what you're going to see out here today euro is kind of flat uh 109 bottom line it, it looks like it basically bottomed out at 108 and then if we get into the pound because we're going to have big action in the next couple of weeks out here uh gee we we'll have big action in the next couple of weeks out here inside the European Union, and it also looks like the pound. Bottom line, you know, we got down to a price point of uh, 122 last week, got to a low of three weeks ago, September 3rd, of 119, but this also looks like it wants to go back topside to the 124. And the yen also is looking to get stronger. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We have the Dow Industrials down 67, NASDAQ is off 13, S&Ps are down seven and a half, we'll come right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now down 84. The Nasdaq's off 14. S&Ps are off 9.5. Let's go over and take a look at uh, a few of these uh, rails. Okay, so, you know, bottom line is that uh, rails were on fire. Uh, that being said, uh, once they came off these highs in July, uh, these little babies are making their way down to the lower end of this consolidation. The lower end of the consolidation also comes in play of that December 2018 swing low. So if we take a look at CSX, you're going to see $80 stock in May, $66 stock now, already hit 63 Bottom line, you came down with volume last week. You're going sideways today. What's sticking out like a sore thumb is this $58.47. Now, 62 uh, 98 uh, 60 yeah, 6298 is the high of that, and we get down to 6397. Yeah, this is another indication that uh, this S&P, December 2018, uh, is going to be game. And the December 2018 uh, S&P, folks, is a long way from where we are right now. Uh, but what you do have is that that is a uh, SPX. Let's, you know, when you, you talk about the rails, and we'll pull a few more of them up, when you, when you talk about the rails uh, getting close to that within five points right now, uh, the S&P cash right now is trading 29.39, and we're talking about the highs of that uh, December level is 25.20, the lows are 23.46. So you're talking about uh, something pretty intense. CSX, let's see who else. Uh, CRV, Northern, let's see. So we bring up, Okay, so I bring up Kansas City Southern. You get Canadian Pacific, Union Pacific, Norfolk Southern. So watch this one. This one, CP. This is a, not in great shape. CP, CP. So Canadian Pacific. This would be in Canadian dollars now. This one here. That's not that bad, actually. 
It's down from, well, it's, it, it's down from 322 to 281. Uh, what it just did, yeah, once it's back inside 291, it got in the lower range, and then that low that it's looking for is 244 to 224. So, uh, big, big number here. If we go take a look at uh, Union Pacific, the low for the year is 128, the high is 180, and we bring this up, and you're going to see the same type of setup. So, oh, this is pretty intense, actually. Yeah, so watch this. This is off the high of 180. Last month we reached 149, you're at 155. And your December high is 138, your low is 128. And it's in the, it's in the lower range. So that baby uh, is looking to go after those numbers. Now the more that you have sectors actually going after that December level, the higher the probability is that that's what we're making waves uh, going down to. Copper, let's go take a look at the copper market. It might take, it looks to me like copper's off the lows. Now, it's taken quite a bit to really get some action going in that market. Uh, this has been bouncing along the, the lows out here since August uh, 5th. Right now, you're at 258, and you get 28,000 contracts traded out here. And we'll see, uh, the last time that we got up to that 270, we had some decent volume at 270. Uh, it came down hard on October 1st. That being said, though, we did 74,000 contracts and you're going into 107. And uh, right now, it looks like to me today that you are gonna basically break the downtrend that has been in place going back uh, till August, uh, no, till September 16th. That's the way, that's the way this is straight, is, is basically heading right now. And this also will have to do with the U.S. dollar. Oil, let's go take a look at the, the oil market. What do we have with oil out here? CL, let's see. CLX, CL, spread. Okay, so... Yeah, November contract would be right. So we're at 53.62 right now. This thing came barreling down last week. You get 22,000 contracts. The low that it was going after is $50.48, which was the August low. And we made it to 50.99. The problem in the oil market is that you got down there and you got down there with volume. So that's saying it's going to come back and test it. And we'll see what kind of volume we got out here today. Right now, uh, thus far, you got anemic volume inside this contract. Uh, we've done 221,000 contracts, and you're slamming into the downdraft that was created out here last Wednesday. Last Wednesday, we were coming down on a 10-minute bar with 41,000 contracts. Uh, TGB, let's go take a look at one of the copper equities for one of our targets. Uh, so this, the low here is 38 cents, the high is 79. This is a equity that is bottom line, uh, very volatile, and um, you gotta be really careful with this baby, and I would not be buying this right now. So what you have here is this. Let me put this on a 10-year. The good news is that it's coming all the way back to the lows of 2016, which was, was the breakout area. The bad news is that got underneath that, which is 44 cents. So what I would do is I would wait, you're at 38, I see what's happening here. I would wait till you get a sign of strength in, in this equity, because this is a personality stock, this equity. Uh, when this thing moves, man, it, it moves with a vengeance. Uh, that being said, that is both ways. Uh, you know, moves up, great, no problem. Moves down, monster problem. No, no two ways about that. Some of the higher volume equities uh, in this market. Well, here, let me show you something else inside the copper market because TGB is not operating correctly as to, you know, you get Southern Copper. Southern, Southern Copper is the largest copper company in the world. Southern Copper just went from $29, got up to 36 and just pulled back. Southern Copper wants higher price. Southern Copper looks to me like $36 is game and a very well uh, could get, get up to that swing point of uh, $39. And right now at 33 we look at some of the higher volume equities out here this morning, and you have, uh, let's see, you get uh, Apple's up 97 cents, you got uh, Marbell up 13, NVIDIA, oh, let's look at NVIDIA, because this is interesting. So a few bulls out here, 
this is something you really want to keep your eye on because NVIDIA is testing its swing point and it has volume behind the move. The swing point that we're talking about is the last swing high of 188.40. And we hit 188.34. You have 3.9 million shares. Now, 8.1 is the number. Um, you know, we'll see uh, basically if this, this thing can get going. You know, each and every time it's come up to the top of this range, it's given it up. The reason I bring it up, bulls and bears, is that the chip market, folks, brings the NDX 100 as well as the NASDAQ higher as lower. And it seems to be a leading indicator out there. When this thing wants to move, man, those chips start moving. Chips start moving. They drag everything up. They drag everything down. That's how this uh, baby uh, shakes out. Dow. Dow Industrials down at 73. NASDAQ off 10. S&P's off 7. Gold down at 590. Silver off a penny. Come right back. Folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Dow. Dow is down 71. Nasdaq's off 7. S&Ps are off 6.5. Let's go over to GE and take a look at GE. This is a stock that's uh, just going to keep bleeding, folks. Uh, GE is uh, flat out here this morning, $8.54. 
And fundamentally, when you take a look at the news out here, so what you have happening is this, okay? You get GE coming out this morning say, saying that they're going to freeze the U.S. pension plan for 20,000 employees with salaried benefits and expects to reduce this pension deficit by 5 to $8 billion. So what that specifically means, folks, is this, is that you get 20,000 employees right now that do have a pension with GE. Um, they're not going to lose the accrued, the benefits that they have accrued over the past years. Uh, what is going to happen at this particular point, though, they're going to have to go from uh, a GE pension plan into a 401k. The next line, though, is going to be the kicker here. We'll see how this shakes out. They, they see a non-cash pension settlement charge in the fourth quarter. Now, a non cash pension settlement charge goes against your balance sheet and they have plenty of these things that have been going left and right and what that specifically means is that they're going to take the uh, aspect of their, their pension of, of where the charge they felt it was going to be and then now what they're going to have to do is face facts as to saying okay this is done this is what our pension is at this particular point that's going to hit their balance sheet um, they're also freezing U.S. supplementary pension benefits for 700 employees. Uh, the quote from the uh, Chief Human Service Officer is, uh, G returning GE to a position of strength has required us to make some difficult decisions, and today's decision to freeze pension is no exception. Uh, they're going to offer uh, 100,000 former employees a limited time option to receive a lump sum. Now, what's intriguing about that is this. This is where this shakes out, folks, is that the way that the pension system works is that if, in fact, GE ends up going BK at some particular point, and then the U.S. government has to take over the pensions, the correlation as to how much you are getting in your pension versus what you'll get once the government takes over is pretty substantial on the downside. That's how this shakes out. Um, so th that's going to be a real question as to employees that are already on a pension, will they take the lump sum knowing you have their money in the hand versus not? Okay, huge decision to be made. There's no two ways about that. Um, the bottom line is saying there's no change uh, for GE retirees already collecting pension benefits or employees with production benefits. Bottom line though, that line there with the GE already collecting, well, they're going back to those former 100,000 of those employees and see what's going on. GE, uh, bottom line right now, employees they get 283,000 employees uh, as it is and every time that we look at this uh, chart uh, it's a one-way bleed not way down which sticking out like a sore thumb uh, still is five dollars and fifty cents that's a high volume low from 09 that hasn't been tested the last time we got down uh, in November of uh, 2018 you got to uh, 679 698 and you also had monster volume we had 3.3 billion uh, as well as two months ago. We haven't got that tested yet to get $7.65. Seven uh, this is going to be a, a classic uh, for any type of uh, business school, folks, as to uh, how you basically uh, smoke and mirrors uh, on a long, consistent basis and what ends up happening uh, as an end result of that. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. The dollar is still hanging above this uh, uh, 98350 uh, number. Euro is at 109, uh, yen is at 107. And uh, action uh, over in the, the UK, folks, uh, next few weeks, we're at the 7th of October right now. It's the 31st of October. It's gonna be a make or break deal. Uh, are an extension. Bottom line is that uh, you have uh, a bunch of different court cases coming in right now uh, that, you know, basically more than likely will make a difference. Uh, the first court case uh, came in and from Scotland this morning and said that uh, the bottom line is that uh, Johnson could continue uh, negotiating uh, with the European Union uh, doesn't mean, though, that he could just do a fast break. Uh, there's going to be another court case coming in sometime, I believe, this afternoon uh, as to the exact same type of situation, meaning Johnson saying that, hey, listen, I'm going to keep going forward no matter what Parliament said. Um, you know, we'll see where the rest of that shakes out. 877-927-6648. Let's go take a look at Amazon, the king dog out here. You're getting into the holiday period. Uh, Amazon trading 1738. 
uh, very close to the lows that were established out here in June of this year, which is 1672. Last week, we got down to 1687. Guess what? You get down there with volume. So that's saying to me the Amazon's not done going on the way down. Uh, three months ago, we were at 2035. You're at a 1738 right now. And... You know, when you bring this back the other side, this is kind of interesting too. When you when we actually bring it back, we're trading at the same place we're trading in July of 2017. Google, we take a look at uh, another high flyer out here. Uh, Google up $12 and 13 at uh, $1,213. Uh, that also has been in the same range, going all the way back to February. And the differential here, oh, this is a yin and yang. Well, look at this. So Google came off its highs in May with monster volume. We went, we went from 12.89 to 11.55. Yeah, that's the top of the range. Google, yeah. I'd like to see this top get tested first, which is 12.65, but Google wants to get out of 1,070. 1,070 is the lows, is the highs of the lows of uh, 2019. I'm talking about fast and furious, man. When these things go south, it's just amazing how fast they can go south. I mean, we, we know that there's no stops on the elevator on the way down, but it's pretty intense. There's no doubt about that. Netflix, Netflix is still having its problems out here. What you have with Netflix, we are trading at 270, follow up 26. And, you know, bottom line is that that baby, the low of uh, December was 231 and we made it to 252. The high of that low, Google's not, I mean, Netflix is not out of the water um, until 298. Uh, Netflix is one of the first ones, monster stocks, to just to get really close to that December level. Uh, the December level again was 231, and we got to 252. And of course, uh, Disney's the one that is uh, kind of raining on Netflix's parade out here. Uh, Disney also down, you know, from uh, 147 to 129. The differential, of course, inside Disney is that uh, streaming all of the above. Uh, what you're going to what what, Dis what what Disney is what Disney is going to get more than anything out of the uh, aspect of streaming is that they're going to get the young children, the parents, putting on Disney and bringing them right up from Mickey Mouse going all the way to Star Wars to, to the whole ball of wax. So what that does, that takes an initial core of new clients coming on for Netflix, and I suspect that's gonna be the real crux inside of how Disney gets big traction versus Netflix. That's what it seems to be. Because you gotta remember something, um, Disney is basically 10 times larger than Netflix. It's a monster number. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Dow, Dow's down 100, Nasdaq's off 13, S&P's are off nine and a half. Be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000, the interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. 
From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's down 77. Nasdaq's off 8. S&Ps are off uh, 7. Uh, bottom line is that you've got a little sideways market out here, slightly lower. Uh, that being said, uh, bottom line is that you have Europe that is still up. Uh, Asia couldn't handle price last night. And uh, the Hong Kong deal, folks, uh, that is uh, a big deal, and that is going to affect uh, many of the uh, high-end companies, um, you know, public companies, that is, meaning the Tiffany's, the... Uh, cause of the world uh, because uh, bottom line shopping uh, is non-existent on weekends now uh, in Hong Kong and the bottom line that um, you know comes in uh, there's big money uh, in a huge way um, in Hong Kong on those weekends so we'll see where the rest of that uh, basically shakes out let me so let me, I want to pull up Tiffany's for a second let's see if we look at this okay so Tiffany's trading eighty nine thirty one. Your low for the year is seventy three. Your high is one twenty four. Pull this back. Oh yeah, this has been projecting that for a while, I guess. Well, we're down from one forty one. You're at eighty nine. Put this on a monthly. Yeah, yeah. So we're back to November. Ooh, that's interesting. November 2013 levels. And what we just what we did do is that uh, sept August we get down to $78. Yeah, there's not much juice here. Let me see who else is in this sector. So we got Tiffany's. Oh, interesting. Oh, this is wild. Let's pull it up this way. This would be pretty cool. I don't know these companies, but these are... So if you're watching Bloomberg, if you're watching Tiger TV, on the screen here, what you're gonna see, I, I have a, just a key you can put up, and they, what happens is that they're saying, these are the people who are in the same business. What's so intriguing about this, even though I brought Tiffany's up, as a US company, they're bred just like Macau, uh, for our gambling companies, comes out of China. In this particular case, uh, you have a couple other companies also, uh, Pandora, we know Pandora, okay. Uh, let's go take, I want to take a look at this other jeweler. So this other jeweler, okay, so I get 1929HK. What happens in the Asia, folks, is that they go by numbers, okay, I just got to remember that, instead of letters, 1929HK, okay, 1929HK, 1929HK. 
Okay, so 1929 HK. So let's bring up this jeweler. So this jewel is trading at 654.1. The low is 577. The high is 854. They take in. No, no, this is Hong Kong dollars. Okay, so Hong Kong dollars correlate to U.S. dollars. Look at this, man. Oh my God, they're taking six, 71 billion. Okay. Retail is 53 billion. Yeah, so look at this. In Hong Kong, they're taking 42 billion. Oh, no, no. It's, then it's Macau, China, too. Okay, so 23,000 employees. Bring this back. Yeah, same setup. This is, uh, so even from, from June of 2018, you were at 10, you're at 650, not the end of the world, but it looks like this thing wants to trade down to 454. So it, we, this, this Hong Kong deal is gonna actually hit, it'll hit some American companies that are doing big, big, big business there. We're doing biz, big business there. It'll definitely hit uh, a lot of Chinese companies. No two ways about that. Gold, let's go over to the gold contract. Take a look at gold out here. What the dollar, the dollar hasn't given it up yet. Uh, but you get a little movement uh, on the way down. And as we're getting a little movement on the way down, a, a dollar, uh, bottom line gold just went from 1501 to 1508. That's not the uh, be all end all, but what is sticking out like a sore thumb that wants to get tested is the 1522. If we get over and we take a look at that uh, dollar, what you're gonna see inside the dollar is that it's edging down uh, closer to getting inside the lower range. Right now you're at uh, 98,775, and the, the rate, the, what we're looking at, the benchmark is 98,371. 98, That's where this is, um, you know, and not a lot of action in there, but it's not going to take much action for the euro or the pound to get to higher price. And if they start moving to higher price, that's when you're going to see that dollar get hit and get hit pretty hard. Uh, we, we talked about oil a little bit earlier. The XLE bottom line, folks, continues to basically lead the oil market lower. You know, the XLE in the last three weeks just went from $63 uh, hit a low last week of 55. The low that was going after is 55, 55. We hit 55, 64. Now we hit that with monster volume. We did 21 million uh, shares at that level. The last low out there was 24 million. Uh, we bounced on Friday with 11. So the correlation goes like this. So we come into the low. You see 24 million versus the 21, right? Now that is still lighter volume, but that's a lot of volume. Where you can get the correlation as to, okay, do you still want to go higher or lower is how do you bounce? And you can see the bounce was anemic. Down with 21 million, up with 11, you're going into 19, bottom line, no, not much action. When you have something like that, folks, that's where, when you hear me say you're building cause. That's when you're building cause for lower price or higher price. In this case, we're building cause for lower price. And I, why? It's because each and every time that you're coming down, you're coming down with volume. You bounce with lighter volume. It takes a period of time of going sideways inside a channel to go up and down, up and down, up and down, drive everywhere out of their mind, and then bang. Then you come down, market lets loose. It gets under a low. As it gets under a low, bottom line is that you have a lot of stops under that low. That blows that, that pot out, and then you get down to the next level. And what you can see inside this XLE, uh, bottom line is that 55.64 is monster volume, 88. I mean, uh, 53, 36 has monster volume, and you can see on a weekly basis, we came down last week with 87 million versus 95 and 69. That is a setup uh, for a lower price. Inside the silver market, what do we have inside the silver market? What silver needs is this. Silver did reject lower price, had lighter volume as it got into its breakout area. That being said, what I want to see silver do is I want to see silver, uh, right now we're trading at $17.60. I want to see that baby get inside of uh, the 1804. 1804 would be saying inside the silver market that guess what? You're in the higher range once again, and we know silver is a psycho market. When this thing starts moving, man, it moves hand over fist. But right now, that needs to catch a bid 
to get up those extra 20 or 30 cents. You get up those extra 20 or 30 cents, you're gonna see a much higher expansion. Why? Because we had the XAU, the HUI, they all came back to their breakout areas. They came back last week with dramatically lighter volume. They rejected them, and guess what? You, then you start pushing higher once again with volume. Nice setup. This whole thing is a really nice setup. Coming right back, folks. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow right now uh, off 63. We get the Nasdaq uh, down three. S&Ps are off five and a half. A bottom line, you get uh, basically a sideways market out here, uh, slightly lower. Inside the Dow Industrials, the strength versus the weakness out here, folks, uh, has to do with uh, you got Apple putting eight positive points, United Health seven, Chevron four. Taken away from it, Visa nine. Travelers 8, Walmart 7.5, no big deal there. Inside the NDX 100, the strength versus the weakness inside the NDX is you get NVIDIA up 2.9%, Align Technology is up 2, you get Bio, uh, Biogen up 1.4, and 
AMD up 1.4. Now that, that's, that, that's the power, which I was talking about a little bit earlier. Uh, the SMHs, folks, let's go look at the SMHs, actually, because uh, SMHs, SMHs. Because the chips, where the chips want to go, that's where the NASDAQ wants to go. Uh, oh, there's no action here. Nothing in the SMHs, no. Nope. The, the near highs, but the bottom line uh, is that you talk about a contraction of volume, man. On Friday, we uh, did 3.5 million. Uh, we did 5.5 at the lows, and now you only got 1.6, and that is going into 4, and that's, that's, that, that is not the kind of action that you do want to see if, in fact, um, the chips are going to basically get that NASDAQ higher. Taken away from it, you got... Uh, Dollar Tree's down a th 3%. You got Baidu off 2.2%. Ultra's off 1.6%. And Wynn is off 1.6%. Wynn's trading at 107.16. This is all about Macau, of course. And, uh, you know, the last six months, Wynn just went from uh, 151. We hit a low out here this morning of uh, 104. Now, Wynn is going into the lower end of 102 also. So that looks to me like it's also building cars. That's going to be that whole China deal, man. Uh, China, Hong Kong, Macau, they're having problems out there. Stay right there, folks. We got our Think or Swim coming up next. And I'm Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon. Have a great one, folks. Have a safe one.